center kind of guiding along the collarbone and then we'll go to the other side left here towards the shoulder chin toward the shoulder go along the collarbones chin to chest and just lift the head up and hopefully this is filtering out my roommate meeting because there's tons of other people talking, but he's not actually in my house. So let's go for cat cow from here. Inhale, chin up, chest up. Exhale, round the back. We're just going to do three, and then we'll change which leg is on top. But you might find that this helps your knee get a little bit lower. And after your third, whenever that is, just find your neutral back and change which leg is on top. You'll have to reassess your positioning of the foot. Flex the feet. So if you're looking at this top foot, you're only seeing the inner edge of the foot. If you see the sole of your foot, you've got a sickle foot going on, and that's not going to help you in arm balances or standing balances or walking. So strong ankles. And chin to the chest, keep lifting the chest up. So this is basically like a Jalandhara Bandha, almost like that. It doesn't have to be that intense. But in Jalandhara Bandha, the chest lifts up also. Now we'll bring left ear to left shoulder. Chin to left shoulder. into center. You could be thinking of Mulavanda and Udiyana Vanda while you're here. That will help you stay upright. Right ear to right shoulder. Chin to the shoulder. Chin to the center chest. And from there, a few cat cows. So if you just round your back to here, you've already got your chin to chest position. And inhale to pull yourself forward, chin up. Just three like that. And after your third, we'll just find our neutral back and we'll release the feet out in front of us maybe 18 inches, let's put the hands under the thighs, around the back. So it feels like your mid back is moving back and your shoulders will still be somewhat over your hips, just for now. And reach forward, go a little bit lower, keep reaching forward, draw your belly in a little more, go a little bit lower, 
you'll start to get off the sitting bones and you're more like on your sacrum almost. Not quite, but almost. And stay there and just lift one leg off the ground. Extend the leg forward as you go down lower and then rise up again to that spot where you were when you lifted the leg. And we'll just do it three times on this side. And keep reaching with your arms. That's going to help you actually get up. And we'll meet in that spot so that we can lower the foot and lift the other foot. So we're still quite rounded. And then when you extend the leg, there's no like jagged edge to your back. And we rise up again. So it's a rolling down. Oh, it's so hard. And a rising up. And the, the leg and the arms actually do help quite a bit. It's not really a momentum thing exactly. It's more like a counterbalance. So let's place the foot, hands under the side, and rise up to your neutral back. Good. Fingers by your butt so that you can walk your feet in closer. And we'll just squat with our feet facing front. So you still are somewhat rounded in your back. And this might be hard for you. It might be super easy. If it is hard, I recommend you watch your Netflix with your laptop on the floor a little bit more often. Okay, let's turn this into Uttanasana. So we'll press into the feet, straighten the legs. Exhale there. Bend the knees again, squat. Inhale. And your hands could be anywhere you want. Exhale, straighten the legs. Your butt will go up to the ceiling. And drop your butt for your squat as low as you can, but maybe to heels, maybe not. And let's do that a few more times. Miss Anouk, you might want to separate your feet to about hips width. Life is much easier there. We will do squats later where your feet are together, because um, for like a Pashasana, they need to be together, but it's going to be easier if you're a the next time that you're in Uttanasana, your forward bend, we'll lift the chest away from the leg, slide the fingers forward, inhale, and fold again for your exhale, slide your hands back. Inhale, hands slide forward because your armpits went forward. Exhale, head down, hands maybe even flat next to the feet. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lengthen the side body. Exhale, fold. Inhale, same thing, and then place the palms flat so that you can jump into Chaturanga with a little lift to the hips and then a pipe back. Good. And we'll meet in downward dog, cycle through at your pace. And when you get to down dog, just shake out your head, press your heels down as best you can. One more breath there. My gang is behaving like shock. We'll lift the heel tie for an inhale, bend the knees, exhale, and jump forward. Inhale when you get there, and let's fold, exhale. Uttanasana. Inhale, arms up. We'll go from here into our squat. So you can have your arms reach forward or do anything you want. And then for Uttanasana, again, we'll reach up. So now our feet are together, and we're going to press our knees together. Pressing the knees together is going to give you a lot more power to stand up. You won't just be using your quads on the outer side, you can use your inner side also. It's hard. Ooh. Maybe I'm just tired. I don't know. But I think it's probably hard. Okay, let's fold and straighten the legs. Inhale, halfway up. Place the palms, jump it back. Chaturanga on your exhale. Inhale for upward facing. Exhale for downward facing. Let's lift the right leg high. Inhale. And touch the knee to the left elbow. Exhale. Leg up again. Inhale. Use our three-legged dog. And knee to the elbow, left elbow. Exhale. One more time like this. And this time when our knee touches our elbow, we're actually gonna let it slide down to the wrist. And we'll swing our right hip to 
our right roots. So we wind up with our five parallel to the top of the mat. Bend that back leg, so it's out of the way, squat the costume. Left arm to the top of the mat, parallel to your right side. And we twist. Good. So your left hand is pulling you into the twist, the right hand is pushing. Take one more breath. You can make it as intense as you want. And we'll just meet in a plank. So you can untwist yourself and step back. Good. On the exhale, down dog B. Butt up, elbows down. On the inhale, straight arm plank. So we're using our fingers and our toes basically to propel us. Let's just go back and forth a few times. And we're gonna to try to squeeze our elbows in. They're obviously not gonna to touch because they're at shoulders width. But by squeezing them in, we're gonna be able to control this and get the right and left elbows to land at the same time and to lift at the same time. At least theoretically. The next time that your arms are straight in plank, just press to a normal downward dog with a straight arm. And we'll just do the other side, left leg up high, turn inhale, touch your knee to your right elbow, exhale. Inhale, leg up. And exhale, bring it forward, knee to elbow. So notice how even here, you're using your fingers and your bottom foot slash ankle to kind of create this. Then we'll lower the knee to the wrist. We'll swing that hip forward. We'll arrange the legs in basically a swastika shape. So if this is the top of my mat, my legs are kind of 90 degrees all around, limbs parallel to each other, right forearm will come down. Left hand will just be near the right hand. It seems more complicated than it is. And we'll try to get our left ribs up away from the floor. So you have to really work to push down with the left hand to get the ribs up. Untwist will just meet in plank. However, you think it makes sense to get there. And we'll go to down dog B for the exhale. This time we'll stay there. We'll press our fingers into the floor so the hands don't move toward each other, they just stay put. Let's bring the feet a little bit closer to the elbows. However close you can without feeling anxious. Let's lift the right leg up to the ceiling and swing it out to the right side and just touch your right toes to the floor off the right side of your mat. And lift the leg up again and lower it to regular down dog feet. We'll just do the same thing on the other side. Left leg up and swing it out to the side just so it touches somewhere off to the side. However far away from the edge of the mat you want. And then left leg up and to the floor again. One more time, right side. Lift it, the hip has to open a little bit so that your toes can touch down. Then leg up and place the foot, normal down dog B, so that your left leg can lift up. Open the hip, toes touch. Leg up again and foot down. And let's just straighten the arms, regular downward dog. Shake out your head and neck. And after your exhale, step or jump forward. Inhale when you get there. Hold, exhale. Bend into the knees, Uttanasana. And let's push to the right. We'll hook our left elbow outside the right thigh. And we're not going to stay there. Once you get settled, we're going to step our left foot back. So we're just in a twisted lunge. And in the twisted lunge, you might be able to slide your left arm in a little bit closer to your thigh. But keep whatever twist you have. Bring your back foot again forward to meet the front foot. Feet together, knees together. We're just in a twisted chair again. Then return to twisted lunge. Left foot back. 
Notice you have to push your right leg into your arm. And again, your twisted chair, back foot forward. And let's untwist and rest for a moment in a squat, which might not be restful for you, in which case I am sorry. But here we are. You either like it or you don't. Here we are. All right. Utkatasana into your twist. Hook your right arm outside of your left side. When you can, step your right foot back. Maybe deepen your twist. It's a lot easier to get that arm far over the leg if your legs are not together. So we'll try to keep the deep twist. Step back foot forward. Press your knees together. Now let's try that one more time. Stepping the right foot back. For balance, we have to push our left knee into the right arm. Step back, foot forward again. Okay, and let's untwist. We'll come through a squat and have a seat. And we'll lift the legs up for Nawasana. I'm trying to peer around my knees to see the, the laptop. I could just move it over a few inches. <laughs> okay, let's hold under the thighs. Decide how big you want your elbows to be and just try to keep it whatever you decide. We're going to round our back and just rock to the shoulder blades and up to your butt. Just in that range. If you can keep your elbows the same degree of bent throughout the whole system of rocking, you'll have an easier shot at being smooth and landing your balance. And you don't want to rock so far back that you're on your neck. Okay, the next time you're balanced on your butt, let's lift the arms up and try to straighten the legs. If that's too much, you could bend your knees again, or you could hold underneath your legs. Legs to come up a little higher with your chest. Good. Let's cross the ankles, place the hands, and vinyasa at your leisure. We'll just meet in downward dog. Okay, from here, right leg up high, inhale. Lift your left heel as high as you can so that your right foot is close to the ceiling. This is just going to give us a little extra space. We're going to step our right foot between the hands. And we'll try to do it somewhat slowly so that we have to use our abdominal muscles and our arms and not just momentum. Good, simple twist. Right arm up, left hand will just stay put. Gaze up at that right thumb. Okay, let's untwist. Step back, downward dog. Now lift the left leg high, lift the right heel high. Usually momentum will help us get that foot forward, but slow this down, bring your knee toward your chest, and then step forward. When you're in your lunge, simple twist, left arm. And ideally you're feeling this in your outer left hip. And look, let's lean your left shoulder back a little bit more. Yes. Good. Stay there. Okay, let's unravel. We'll step to downward dog again. Same thing on the right side. Right leg up, left heel up. Knee to chest so that you can step your right foot forward. This time we're going to slide our left knee to the pinky toe side of the right foot and have a seat. The legs of Ardhamatsi and Drasana. But we're just going to sit up tall for a sec. Good. Let's hook our left arm. We're going to do it uh, not full Ardhamatsi and Drasana pose. We're going to get our left thumb to go under the little triangle of our right leg. And maybe we can lift the right hand up to hold hands. So this is not a normal 
Aramatsinatana position, this would be the arms of Martyatana seat. And normally in this pose, in Ardhamatsanatana, we try to get our armpit right up on the thigh. But for this bind, you're going to need a bit of a gap because you have this big rotation to do in the left shoulder. So allow as much of a gap as you need. Okay, let's unclip. We're going to rock forward, stand on that right foot, and just lift the left leg up as high as we can. We'll inhale there. We'll curl into a little ball, knees touch, forehead to knees, exhale. Inhale again, left leg high. Exhale, curl into a little ball. One more time like this. I challenge you to actually get your forehead to touch your knees. I think a lot of you can actually do it. Meet in Arda Chandrasana. Left leg extends back at approximately hip height. So when you were in your standing split, you were trying to get your leg real high, but now it's just going to go hip height. We don't have to fight the, the gravity situation. Now we're trying to open that right hip. And Anup, lean back. At least you're consistent. I could say the same thing a few times. Real easy to fix issues when there's consistency in them. <laughs> So straighten that standing leg a little bit more for everybody. And let's keep our legs straight. We'll just square our hips to the floor, lower the left hand. Take a breath here. It's like the legs of warrior three, but not the arms. And let's drop the left hip a little bit more. Good. And let's jump that right foot back to three-legged downward dog. So you kind of go through this little handstand hop to get back. Good. Right heel up high off the ground. Step your left foot forward. Try to use your knee to chest situation to get it there. And we'll slide the right knee in so it's outside of the left foot and have a seat. You can always sit on something. Just don't sit on your right foot. We'll hug that knee in toward the right shoulder. You can always stay like that. If you're going for the bind, bend the elbow. And it's coming from this right shoulder turning down. You could use your left hand on the forearm to give your right forearm a little nudge through. And the right hand doesn't really have to go very far under. It's just going to be near your right hip. Try to sit up tall, belly in. You can look back over your left shoulder. Okay, let's unravel. We already have our left foot stomped on the floor, so we'll just lean our body forward and stand on that left foot. Wherever it is on the mat is fine. It doesn't have to be centered or anything. And we'll just go three times, exhaling into a little bowl, head to knees, inhale, extend as much as you can. So I like to think of that potential and kinetic energy from high school chem. The more you curl into a little bowl, the more you'll be able to extend out further. So let's meet in Ardhamakindrasana. Flex the right foot, scoop that left hip underneath you, and now our hip bones, our collar bones, are all going to face the right side of the mat. You might be able to look up at your right thumb. Let's get the legs a little straighter. Right hand down, square your hips, take a breath there. And your hands will be a little bit in front of your left foot so that you can lean forward and do a little handstand hop into downward dog. And we'll just lower both feet when we get to downward dog. Okay, right leg up high, inhale. Step to the hands, exhale. 
high lunge for an inhale. Lower the back knee, cactus arms, exhale. So it's a brief Anjaneyasana. High lunge again, reach up. Bend the back knee, cactus arms. Just one more time like that. Next time that we're in a high lunge, we'll turn it into warrior two. Adjust your feet if you need so that you have that heel to arch alignment. Okay, and to partial get off in a round one, let's put our elbow on our thigh, reach the left arm over the heel. And we'll just stay here for a moment. We'll try to get this right hip more underneath. I'm thinking of bringing like my right butt cheek basically underneath me toward the camera so that the chest can go up and open more. So let's now put this top arm behind the back to hold on to the right side. Then if you can, right hand to the big toe side of your foot. Now your hand is basically squished between your body and your thighs. It's pretty much stuck there. Just take a breath and try to get your right hip a little more under you. Let's bring the right hand, the bottom hand, to the top of the foot. You can get your thumb underneath the arch and the palm on the top of the foot, and we'll just straighten that right leg. This is just a variation or I'm trying. If that right hand position doesn't work for you, just slide your hand to a different spot. If you can, chin to your left shoulder. Look up. Take two more breaths. Look, lean back, a little bit more. Okay, let's flip our left hand out of that inner thigh position, bend into the right knee again, and now full bind, right arm underneath the right leg. The left hand is already back there, it's just near the right hip. So we can get our right hand underneath. And let's work on getting, okay, so Carrie, that's a good bind. Let's change the position so your right hand is holding your left wrist. Yes. And as you get more comfortable here, you're just gonna walk your right hand up your left forearm toward your elbow. Okay, let's unwind ourselves and just step back, vinyasa. Potentially your right hip is on fire right now. Mine is, so I hope yours is. Okay, we're going to repeat something we did earlier. Let's drop forward to plank and find your down dog B for your exhale. Let's bring the feet to touch and lift the right leg up high. Inhale and tap your right toes down outside of your mat. Exhale. Inhale, leg up again and lower the foot. We'll try the other side, left leg up. So we're just practicing straddle, essentially. Touch down with the left toe, lift up and lower. Let's do one more time each side. So you'll notice, since we're only doing one leg, you might be fighting to keep your weight centered on your arm. That would be normal. If you were doing both legs, that wouldn't be an issue. But we do have to open the hips quite a bit. And we have to use the hands a lot so that we don't wind up clunking our head into the floor. Okay, from down dog B, let's just straighten the arms for normal down dog. And we'll do all of that other stuff on side two, left leg high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. High lunge, inhale, arms up. Bend the back knee, cactus arms in Anjaneyasana leg. Inhale, squeeze your thighs together. Exhale, lower the back knee. Inhale, squeeze and reach. Exhale, lower the knee. Inhale, high lunge into your warrior two. Adjust your feet as needed. I often need to adjust my pants because I have the issue of that sausage casing. 
being too tight for the sausage. Okay, elbow to side. Right arm over the ear. And the emphasis here is that left hip going under you. And that really should be the emphasis, even when we're in a full bind. We just get distracted because the bind is a challenge and our brain can only handle so much at once. Okay, right arm behind the back. Try to get your fingers to your inner thigh, including your thumb. Good, if you can, left hand, big toe side of the foot. Some people do this on a block or with fingertips. And notice because you're stuck in this position, you are leaning back quite a bit. Even a nook is leaning back. <laughs> okay, left hand to the top of the foot. The thumb can be in the arch, the palm will be on the bony top of the foot, and we'll straighten that leg. We'll push into the ball of the foot to get the leg as straight as possible. And in a way that will depend on your flexibility, but only so much as keeping the hand on the foot. If you slide the hand up your leg, you can definitely get your leg straight. Okay, so we'll slip that right hand out of there. The knuckles will stay near your hip, just so it's in the vicinity. Rebend your left foot and start to dip your left shoulder inside of your knee so that you can get your left arm under the leg. And you'll attempt to grab your right wrist with your left hip. Good, and that just ensures that you're in a position where you can continuously grow and deepen it and there's never an end. We never have a practice where we're like, okay, I did that, now I'm, I'm done with yoga for this life. It never ends. Okay, so let's slowly get out of there and vinyasa. We're just going to work on uh, the straddle with our Banahasta Shirsasana A. And uh, Anouk, you can continue to do the, the exercises that we're doing with the feet going out to the side. Banahasta A is the headstand where we interlace our fingers. And then you'll actually be putting your head on the ground. I'm just going to show you facing this way in case you're not sure what I mean. So we'll come up. You don't have to come all the way up, but you can. So we're just going to practice opening the leg as wide as you feel comfortable and bringing them down as far forward as you feel comfortable. It's quite different if the feet land where you could see them versus if they land kind of hiding from view more to the side. So just practice. It's really a function of your hips and your belly. But of course, you have to feel good in your balance before you can start messing with something like that. And you might decide that you open your feet 12 inches, and that's enough. You just go as low as you can while keeping your balance. Good. And now, bottom 12 inches go even slower. I know gravity gets you, but you got to fight gravity as best you can. Good. And the next time that you're vertical, you can either change your hands and exit Chaturanga or just lower your legs and take your rest in child pose or something else. I will meet back in 20 seconds or so. I'm going to grab a dish towel again because, of course, I didn't realize how hot it would be. And my sweat towels are all stuck in the room with my roommate. Okay, now let's press back to downward dog. Bring the right leg up high for an inhale. And step it to the hands gently for the exhale. Warrior one, inhale. Into vocal cocks on the arm. So we'll bring right arm underneath and uh, try to whip that arm around so that we can get our palms together. This is not Gomukasana arm. 
I like it. This is um, uh, why is that arm? I can't even pronounce that word. Horse pose arm. So we'll try to get our elbows up high, our thumbs away from the chest or away from the face. So that we feel a stretch in the back of the shoulder. Take one more breath there. Release the grip, reach up for an inhale. And exhale for interlacing the fingers behind the back. Bend the elbows so that you could get your webbings connected from right hand, left hand. Then arms straight, chest up, and we'll hold forward. You can have your palms stay together or you can separate your palms. You're going to try to get your right shoulder inside of your right knee. You can just drop your head, reach your knuckles away from your back. Some of you, your hip is so flexible that your head will come down to the floor near the arch of your foot. Just take another two breaths. Release the grip, hands to the floor, step back, vinyasa. Before we do that on side two, let's jump through and have a seat. Do your little two part jump through if you need, because we want to keep our butt high off the ground as we extend the legs and then lower down. So it just it does take a moment to get there. Okay, let's bend the right knee and get our heel pretty close to the sitting bone. We'll hug our knee to the left shoulder, and we'll hook our left arm when we can on the outside of the leg. So one of my little tricks here is here I was hugging, here I am hooking. If I want to deepen the hook, I'm going to lean back, get my belly flesh away from the side, and then come in again. So you kind of scoop around the leg so that you can get your arm real far over. From there, we'll dip our thumb toward the floor and bind around the right leg. It is the same bind you already did, but it's a little harder now because instead of just having your thigh, it's your thigh and your calf. So there's more distance to cover. Sitting up on something, like having something under your butt, does make it a little bit easier. Also, you could just keep your right hand on the floor and just deal with getting that left arm around. Okay, let's unravel ourselves. And let's just cross the ankles, hold on to the feet or ankles and pull your knees into your chest. And just stay here for a second. Front again. Okay, so notice your knees are at your shoulders, no problem. Let's stay there, reach forward. Now there's a problem. But alas, we are doing this. Let's keep in that little ball shape. Let's hook a little higher up by our knees, because if you hook by your ankles, your knees are going to be like way out to the side. So hook higher up, then your knees will be in close. And let's jump back from there. Hands down, lean forward. Swing, slide, crawl, your feet back. And vinyasa at your timing. From down dog, we'll bring our left foot forward for warrior one with Vaikanasana arms. Left arm under. We did that pose once when I was at Buddy's house. I remember we did like a million preps for it. It's the one where one of your legs is in lotus and the other is in a, a squat kind of position. Thumbs away from the face. Elbows a little higher. Okay, let's release our grip. I reached up on the other side, so I guess we should reach up here. And then exhale, interlace the fingers, wiggle with your shoulders however you need to, so that you can kick out your straight arm, and exhale to fold. If 
you are choosing not to go too deep today, you can keep your shoulder on your thigh. Otherwise, slide the shoulder inside of your knee. Belly in. This is a nice prep for foot behind the head type of stuff. Don't worry, we're not doing that today, but just this idea of your spine is getting closer to the floor than your thigh bone. Okay, let's release the grip, place the hands, step back, and vinyasa. And when we come to our jump through, we're going to try to keep our butt off the ground as we extend our legs forward. And then we'll lower our butt and our legs at the same time. So you can even do that in a two part. We'll jump through and get our edges of feet near our hands. We'll keep leaning forward and then lower. Left leg will bend. Get your heel close to your butt. This is Marjasana C. Hug the knee to the shoulder. Hook your arm. Notice what flesh is having a sort of a, a barrier issue to get it out of the way. Because we need our entire arm at our disposal. So you'll keep your elbow bent, get your fingertips toward the ground. If that is difficult or painful, do not go further. When that's no problem, which eventually it will be no problem, your shoulders will loosen up, then you can start to get your knuckles over to your right hip. Good. And just like when we were, when we were in a twisted lunge, you got to push your leg into your arm. Slowly unwind ourselves. Again, lean back a little bit so you can get your legs off the ground. Hug them in. And reach forward. Keep reaching your arms straight, just lay them on the floor. Then lean forward into your hands and lift your butt. So you just went like maybe eight inches. Good. And now slide the feet back. And vinyasa. So our next order of business is just going to be Vatahasa C with the same leg situation you did before. Trials. This is the one where your hands are flat. If it would uh, suit you to repeat what you did before, feel free to do that with the hands interlaced. And maybe now that you're in a different headstand, maybe you don't go quite as, as crazy with your straddle. Maybe you let your feet be a little less extreme out to the side, or maybe you don't go as low. I know that now I'm landing my toes where I can see them, whereas in the other one, I didn't see them. So I have less, uh, less mobility here. Which just stems from sort of a lack of shoulder strength on my part. But it's ever changing. Even if the legs just open 12 inches, that's still signaling to your brain an eventuality of a straddle in the next decade. Okay, so come on down and take your rest, whatever that is. I find that if I'm coming out of things like um, Parandavasana, I love a child pose rest, but otherwise, I like to just kneel. I get a little too comfy in child pose. Okay, let's meet in downward dog.
Bring our right foot about three quarters of the way forward for twisted triangle. We'll plant both feet. That left foot will spin out to the side. Left hand, somewhere of comfort to you. Block or no block, right arm up. Let's try to put a little bit of weight on that left thumb and pointer finger. That's going to help you get your left shoulder over your left wrist. And then your right shoulder can have more of an opportunity to open. Let's unravel ourselves and just step into your Anjaneya. You can step your left foot back or your right foot forward. Bring the left knee down. And we'll just put hands on right thigh for now and just let the hips drop so that we're in a split from knee to knee. Okay, right leg into pigeon. We're not going to stay for too long. Just work on opening that right hip to a point that you feel like something is being affected. There are some days that I have my foot real close to the left hip bone, and I feel like that's enough. Other days, I can get the shin more parallel to top end of mat. But no matter what you're doing, let's drop the left hip a little closer to the floor. Let's rise up, we'll swing that back leg forward, and we'll bring the right leg to half lotus, lean to the right, and fold the left leg back. Paradvajasana. I'm going to show you basic crunches because black pants on a black man is cool. So the knees are about max width. We have one virasana leg, one half lotus leg. Wrap your right arm behind your back. Try to find your toes. If you can't find your toes, but you are in half lotus, it just means your half lotus is not quite where it should be. Normally there's like a two inch of toe to grab. Left hand underneath coming from the outside. So the least comfortable of ways to get your hand underneath your right knee, that's the way it goes. Let's push that left hand down into the floor. Push your right knee through your left hand. Twist a little bit more. Good. And let's unravel. And we'll just bring the feet together. We'll rock forward so we're squatting. And in a moment, we're going to twist into a partial bhakasana. You can arrange yourself any which way in your house or on your mat. Um, if you wanted to chaturanga out of it, you would need to start with your feet on the left side of your mat so that your hands can be on your mat. I'm just going to show you facing this way because it's an easier view. So we're going to twist. You'd have to lift your butt off your, your heels first. You'll twist to the right. You'll reach out to the side. Notice the left hand is kind of close to the foot. But the right hand has to go pretty far. So I'm reaching. My hands are the same distance from each other that they would be in a down dog, and then I can lift my feet. My hips are just floating in space between the elbows. So really the, the trouble spot for a lot of people is reaching out with that right hand. Good. And get your exit, whatever it might be. We're going to meet in downward dog. If you're choosing a chaturanga exit, just make sure you have room behind you. I'm worried about a nook's file cabinet. I don't want anyone breaking their feet. <laughs> we have constrictions here in our little housing. Okay. So let's scrum down dogs with everything on side two. Left foot forward for twisted triangle. We step maybe three quarters of the way forward because it's not that full lunge distance. Right hand down. On this side, I can tell my hips are being crazy. So instead of reaching my left arm up, I'm going to bring my left thumb into my hip crease and push that left hip back. 
then it's much easier to get my right thumb and pointer finger pressing down the shoulder over the wrist. At some point, maybe the hips start behaving and I reach up or I reach up for a breath and then I realize they went cockamamie again. I love that word cockamamie. I think we have to use it more often. Pretty much describes at least 15 minutes of every 30 minutes of my life. Okay, let's unravel ourselves and find Anjaneyasana with the hands on the left knee. So putting this before pigeon might be a little odd, but when we're in pigeon, I don't want us to be distracted by our right hip flexors. I want us to get into that left hip so that when it comes to do the half lotus, we can do it. So this might allow us to get deeper into pigeon just by getting our right hip flexors sort of out of the way. So let's walk our left foot to the right. Find your pigeon. And we need to keep our hips square to the floor, which is going to mean on this side, you have to work to get your right hip down. One of my techniques to do that is I put my left hand out to the side and I push the left hand down. And it centers me a little bit better. Rise up and swing the right leg forward. Half lotus up that left leg. The way you know your placement is on point is get your heel to your belly button and bring your left knee close to your right knee. And your edge of foot is going to be right at your hip crease. You can pull the right leg back or you could do something else with that right leg if that hurts the knee. And we'll twist to the left. Basically, so long as your thighs are in this V shape, you can adjust your legs accordingly so that your knees and hips are happy. Okay, now let's untwist, undo the legs, find your squat. So the Achilles have to be somewhat flexible to sit like this, which reminds me, Lisa sent me an article that I never read. Girl, I gotta go back through our text messages and read them. I'm sure it was hilarious. Okay, so butt is near the heel. Let's lift the butt up so that we can twist to the left. If you only hook on your right elbow, you can do this balance. It's just gonna be a little bit more precarious. So hook as high up as you can on the arm, and reach that left hand out to the side. All 10 fingers are gonna be facing the same direction. Your wrist creases are facing the same direction. And that is important because that is your foundation. Good, you gotta lean forward quite a bit as well. And when you've had enough of trying such things, let's meet in downward dog. The hands and knees. So we're going to go up into pincha and down through a straddle. We're not going to be able to get back up again from the straddle because we're new to this process. So just up to pincha, down through the straddle. Do your best. And you can repeat the headstand thing if you prefer. And when you are choosing to start to separate your legs, change your gaze a little bit to between your elbows so that you're not in a huge back bend so that you have a chance at getting your feet to land sort of on the side of your elbows. Because if you're in a big back bend, you can't really um, draw your belly in as much. You have to think of it more as your straight up and down headstand kind of style. 
Okay, pretty good. So we'll revisit that a few times. That was just round one. All right, let's come into our squat and make a choice. Do you need to sit on something or do you need something underneath your heels so that you can stay here for a moment? Then let's bring our left arm either between the legs, so your shoulder is inside of your left knee, or twist fully and get it outside of your right knee. So you choose, and then you're gonna bind around whatever you can. You might bind around both legs, or you might bind around one leg. It's the same bind you did before, but if you're not sitting on anything, you might feel a little precarious. Take two more breaths, push your leg into your arm. Good, and let's unravel. And let's rest for a moment in kneeling. So we have our knees on the ground and let's have our toes tucked under like this. And if that kills your feet, you can stand like this so that there's not quite as much weight bearing down. Okay, so we'll try the other side. This is Pashasana. It is a much more forgiving pose if you sit on something, but maybe it's not as fun that way. So decide, do you want your right shoulder inside of your right leg or outside of your left? And if you're gonna bind, do you wanna bind only around your left leg or around both or around your right leg? Depends on where you put the shoulder. One of the tricks I've found for full pose is I get my bind when the heels are a little bit off the floor and then put the heels down again. Two more breaths. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Very good. And let's unravel and we'll jump back vinyasa. So that is plush asana, first pose of second series. It's a bit challenging as you have witnessed. Okay, right foot between the hands. Left knee down. Let's scoot the left knee back a few more inches and bring both hands to the big toe side of the foot. We'll flex that right foot, unbend it so our hips go back, and then bring the edge of the foot to the floor so our toes face the right. Then re bend the knee and come as low as you can. If you're able, lift your left knee off the ground. Let's return to palms. We'll straighten the leg and pivot to the side for Samokanasana round one. So we're gonna, for this one, keep our soles of feet on the floor and our toes facing front. We're not gonna get super low because of that restriction. I mean, some people do, like I've seen people get their pelvis to the floor with their feet like this, but that ain't us. We normal people, we don't do that. We just keep our weight in our hands so that our legs don't snap off our bodies. Okay, let's start the heel toe our feet in. And to do that, we have to lean our shoulders forward a little bit more. Good, we'll come to a prasarta stance, so our feet are a comfortable distance apart, weight in the feet. And let's try to get our elbows down to the floor. If this happens for you, you'll come up to a straddle headstand. If this does not happen for you, repeat the way we got it to headstand before, which was just with our feet together. And then we'll practice the straddle thing again. It's really just where you're coming from. The end result is the same. I just notice how you lift your heels and then the balls of your feet and then you're on tippy toes and then eventually you get up. And let's just go up and down with the legs 
And the last time that you land in your prasarta, we'll just walk our hands to the top of the mat and we'll just change legs. So you can step forward to change legs, or you can step to down dog to change legs. And we'll put our right knee on the floor. So facing front with Anjane Asana, left foot in front. And to the big toe side of the foot, we'll spin the left foot out a little bit. And to get into this deeper, first we're going to back up. We're going to let the knee drop away. When we back up, the knee will go pretty far out to the side, and then we'll come in low, and maybe to the elbow. And maybe the right knee off the ground. onto the palms. We'll spin to the side again. I'm just going to pivot to the camera again. So we'll try Samakonasana, but this time the more common way. We'll let our feet separate and then we'll spin the toes up so that we're just on the heels and the kneecaps will face the ceiling. Then we'll be able to go a little bit further apart with the legs. You may or may not want to bring your butt to the ground. Sometimes I like to give my wrists a break and bring my butt to the ground and then do like a little wrist stretch. Um, if your butt is off the ground, you can probably get your legs in a straight line, 180 degrees. Once the butt's on the ground, it's hard to do that. Okay, so we're gonna meet Prasarta again. So hands will come down, shoulders have to lean forward. Basically a prep for a handstand. And we'll walk the feet in to a comfy spot. This time we're gonna attempt Vatapanasana uh, no, Vadahasta Shirsasana, sorry. C. So you did A with the interlaced fingers last time. Now we'll do C, which you did earlier, but you did it from a different place. So lift the heels, lift the balls of the feet, and eventually lift the toes. We'll again go for three times, but you'll notice your weight is different. Your foundation is different. This is hard. Okay, and whenever you're back on the ground, Let's walk our hands toward the top of the mat. Vinyasa. Okay, let's bring our feet about 12 inches behind the hands and squat, which you've already done in all your pashas and the prep. So that's a piece of cake. And let's make sure actually that you have like 24 inches in front of you on your mat. Because we're going to attempt a bakasana and then a lift up situation. So hands down, knees to arms. We can keep the knees on the arms for now. You don't have to, your choice. We're going to practice getting the head up. So when I want to lower my head, I'm going to bend the elbows and gaze toward my feet. When I want to lift my head, I'm going to look forward and try to straighten my arms and lift my spine to the ceiling. So experiment with that for a moment. Most of the time when folks can't do it, it's because they're leaning too far back. It's a natural reaction because you don't want to get a bloody nose.
And when you're thinking spine to the ceiling, as you lift up, it's your belly drawing in. The front side of your body gets compressed, the back of your body gets stretched. So let's have a seat for a moment in um, a wide-legged stance. It doesn't exactly matter where right now. We're just going to practice getting the calf muscles to push into the floor, knees and feet up. Uh -huh. And while we're here, let's bring our thumbs to our palms, curl the fingers around, and get your knuckles down so that we're stretching the inside of the wrist. Elbows can be straight or bent. Ow, it hurts. But it feels correct. So in a moment, we're going to try our partial hakasana again. Some of you will try it the way we did before, from squatting. Some of you will try it from headstand. And you can shake out your hands, and we'll bring the feet together. So if I were to try it, from how we did it before. Remember, it's the one where you started here and then you reached your hand back. Or if I try it from headstand, I'm going to face this way. I know that Carrie missed it when we did this a while back. So the, the key element, this is that tripod one. Getting the knees onto the arms is very hard. So I'm going to curl in. I'm going to bring my elbow in a little bit so that I can get my leg over there. And then the lifting up process is the same as what you just did in your bakasana. And then if you want to do the other side, you can rest between or you can just go for it. So you end up in the same place either way. Just do you want to get here from your feet or from your hands? Can't tell if the Nook's screen is frozen. Hey, it's not frozen. Okay, she's moving. <laughs> if you had trouble with the balance from the feet, do it that way until that's easy. Because going from the head, you have to incorporate everything you do in your bakasana lift up. Release the elbows in. Yes. Good. And the same is true about the, the regular aspect of the arm balance. If we only hook the knee, it's very hard. But if you're entering from headstand, you might only be able to hook the knee. So you just deal with the precarious nature of it until it's no longer a problem. Good. Okay. So when you feel like you have experimented on both sides equally, we'll come into that wide-legged position again. And this time we're going to actually measure out our leg distance by holding our edges of tape. So if my feet are really far apart, I won't be able to grab them. If you have tight hamstrings, you might not be able to grab your feet anyway, in which case just hold on to your shins or something else. This is another way that we can get our bodies used to the straddle position. Of course, this is much more uh, palatable than doing it from an inversion. Okay, let's rise up and we'll just face the right leg for Hanumanasana. However, you want to wiggle into it. Hanuman is your split. Let's see, Sanskrit word. Hanuman is said to have left from South India to Sri Lanka. So imagine yourself leaping over that ocean. Okay, 
So we're going to face the same direction for the other side, which means we have to hoist ourselves to down dog in between. So let's practice lifting our back knee, lifting our hips, and swinging that right leg back. So take that low belly lift. Okay, other foot front or Hanumanasana. Let's step back to downward dog. And we'll go for a pinch of my urasana uh, with like not a huge back bend. And we'll just sit through the legs a few times forward and back. So I'll show you what it looks like if you're not sure what I mean. I'm going to try to kick up with the leg I don't favor just so that I can even myself out a little bit. So one leg is forward, one leg is back. And then I'll just try to change that in the air. And it doesn't have to be a huge, uh, you know, huge deal. Just a little bit front, a little bit back, just so that you can feel how your legs talk to each other. And when you're in your initial ascent, go for as small of a kick as possible. Just a little, a little boop to get up there. Okay, good. We're a little bit tired. <laughs> it is a natural response. Okay. So we'll just insert right here what y'all love so much, uh, pinch it with a straddle down. And then we'll go into some back bends that are not quite as emotionally draining as this. Because I know that, that this gets, uh, you get a little anxious. So we'll just try to stick our pinch of balance and we'll open up the legs to the side this time. And this is the one where we're gonna try to keep our Gaze more between the elbows. So it's still a forearm stand, but maybe don't think of it quite as as like a pinch up because you're not in a in the back there. Anuk is like, heck no, I'm not doing a straddle down. I'm gonna go to Scorpion instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay. She's got space issues. I'm glad that you're not gonna let yourself break your foot. All right, so let's come into um, pigeon and grab a strap if you have one handy. Uh, there'll be variations that you can do without a strap anyway. So right leg in front pigeon. We'll reach back with our left hand for Vekas of the grip. So that means our left hand is on the inside edge of the foot. The thumb is near the big toe. And we'll start to bend our knee, our left knee more, and we'll pull that foot in close. See how that left elbow starts to lift up to the ceiling? I don't have a big house in the grip yet, but I do have my foot close to my body. Then I can flip my grip around so that my fingers curl over the toes. But the foot has to be pretty close to you to get that hand to swivel. And let that go. And let's just change sides. Right hand to the inside of the right foot. Pull it in as best you can. And if it's available, I like to put finger, uh, pointer finger between big toe second toe. Then you know that your hand is not crunching all your toes off the, off the foot.
Okay, let's let that go. Step back, vinyasa, and then we'll go for another variation. We'll bring our right foot forward again. This time we'll interlace the fingers on the ankle. Okay, if possible. So that left foot is now going to be flexed. And we're going to kick the foot back. It's very much like a Danyarasana feeling. The chest opens. And if your leg is very strong here, you won't feel like you're going to fall. If my leg gets weak, this happens. I go forward, and now my chest is not open. So you work the leg like that, and your upper body gets to feel good. Okay, let's release, change sides. Kind of awkward getting into it, I know. King Pigeon is even more awkward to get into. So we might as well get used to being awkward. Okay, let's get out of there and vinya. Final version of pigeon, right leg forward. If you've been putting your foot quite far forward, let's bring it back a little bit so it's closer to your left hip. I'm going to use my little sweat towel on my back foot to help me get into a pig pigeon -y type of thing. So you would hold it like a little loop strap thing. The elbow, that left elbow is going to come down by your hip. Then your foot will come close. So it's kind of the opposite of Vekasana. Vekasana, your elbow is up, now it's down, and then it's going to go forward to get up. So it kind of did a little swoopy action down to get up. And then you can reach your right hand up. Good. And you can make your strap as big or as little as you want. Make sure that you're able to balance here. So if you needed a hand on the ground, you could spare a hand, but if possible, both hands on the strap, use your legs to hold you up. Okay, let's get out of there and change sides. So the hardest part is going to be getting the shoulder into position. So first you get your loop on your strap or whatever, get your right elbow in towards your hip, foot comes close, right elbow points forward, and then up. Good. Tara, where are you going? You have two legs, Miss Bloom. She's going in her cupboard and she's straight up ignoring me. <laughs> she thinks I can't see her. Are you eating chocolate in the middle of class? Okay, not chocolate, probably a cough drop. <laughs> okay, let's get out of there. I do think that's her chocolate cabinet though. <laughs> All right, let's vinyasa. So we'll go for uh, like a, a pinch Mayurasana, but then we're going to turn it into more Stanyuasana, a little less back then. And then we're going to de uh, descend with straddle legs. I'll attempt to show you whether it works or not, it's to be determined. But pinch we have our back then, so I'm looking forward, and my feet are reaching in the direction that I'm looking. 
I'm going to change it. I'm going to try to reach my feet up more and drop my head down a bit. And then I'll let the legs open. So I felt the, the position of my back get a little more comfy when I got out of the back there. So give it a try. Also, just going back and forth, if you don't have the space in your house for a straddle, just going back and forth from a, a more back bend to a less back bend, that's a, that's a good practice. Takes a lot of concentration. Carrie, yay. That was like a nail biter. I was watching it. I was like, oh, is she going to stick it? Is she going to stay? <laughs> All right. Stay for a long time. Okay, let's come on to our backs. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. We'll do three back bends from our backs, and then we're going to try that same thing again. So let's lift the hips, interlace the fingers underneath you, and try to poop up the chest. Let's press into the feet a little more so you feel your hips rise. Squeeze the knees just a smidge in, just so that they're actually like over the ankles, because most of us, we let our knees drop open. Okay, let's release the grip, lower down. And we'll place the hands near the shoulders for Urdhva Dhanurasana. You can always put your hands on the baseboard if um, this hurts your wrists. We'll lift our hips, come to the top of the head. We'll make sure our elbows are in so that they're not wide. And lift straight up. Come on down from Urdhva Dhanurasana, tuck your chin so you can land on your shoulders so that you don't do a weird little neck crinkle thing. And either repeat one of those or go for Viparita Dhanurasana. We'll come to the top of the head and then we'll move the hands back by the feet so that the elbows come down. If the hands go too close together, the elbows are going to go really wide. And that's going to make your shoulders reject this pose. So err on the side of getting your hands wide. And then the rest will follow. Elbows will be in, shoulders will cooperate. The way out of Viparita Dhanasana is to place your palms flat like Urdhva. Straighten your arms on an inhale. And then lower to your shoulders like you would exit a normal or Dhanurasana. Okay, let's go to the side and sit up. And we'll just try that same old Pincha Mayarasana thing. So you'll start in Pincha with the back bend shape, and then you'll take away the back bend. And then you'll try to hinge at the hip. Go slow. Keep reaching for the ceiling. And when you start to separate your legs, go as far out to the side as you can so you feel length in your legs. Then you'll just have a little less burden on your back. Oh, Lisa. Oh, Lordy, it's getting better every time. I wish we could have videoed like your first one and then like the progression is very large. That was good, very smooth. Okay. So if you have some more of those in your system, by all means, do them, get them out of the way. 
When you're ready, we're just gonna meet in a V shape of the legs where the feet are like mat split. But if you were about to have a, a moment, keep working on that other thing. Okay, we'll slide the hands down to the edges of the feet. Let's tuck our elbows inside of our calves. Drop the head. And just feel this stretch in your back. Rise up and wiggle the legs together. And fold again. The elbows will be pretty close to the legs. Sometimes I even kind of tuck them underneath the legs. Kind of the flesh, flesh to flesh. Let's rise up. We'll cross the legs. If you can go for lotus, we've done a lot of binds today. So we're going to talk that final bind through. So remember, heel to belly button, knee in. Then the other heel, up, knee in. So you end up with toes dangling over your hips. Then you would reach your left arm behind your back and grab hold of your right foot. And that's not so hard to get. The second one is way worse. So when you're able, get your arm as far over as you can, out of the way, and then you're going to whip your right arm around. There's a bit of a lean. See how I'm kind of like, as I whip, I'm leaning away from my left foot so that I can get the grip. And then once you've got the grip, you're up straight. And then we'll fold forward. And if you're not in lotus, you can hold opposite elbows behind you. And as you fold, you're going to lift your back up into your forearms. So in essence, you're pressing on your erector muscles and you're giving yourself like a little reprieve. Okay, let's rise up. Any way your legs are is fine. Put your hands under your thighs and lift your butt. We'll stay for 10 breaths. That's 10, nine, Eight, seven, lean forward with your shoulders. Five, four, but up a little higher. Three, two, and one. Good. So you can vinyasa again, or you can just call it a day. If you're in lotus and you want a vinyasa from here, it is nice sometimes to just rock forward, put your elbows by your hips, lean, and then unravel your legs. You just kind of wind up in your vinyasa. Using my back because my hands are not on my mat to anchor it, so we call it. Okay, so we made it to the promised land, which is Shavasana. And out of breath.
four breaths here. Go through your process of sitting up. Just bring the hands together. And the folding forward is basically like a curling in on yourself so that you can maintain inward focus. Physically, it doesn't matter how low you go. Let's rise up again. Namaste.